it started with a simple herd of 40 milk cows brought over from Denmark. A few decades later, one dairy farm grew to 20,000 with more than 400,000 cows. It all began with the king's intent to promote milk drinking habits among his young subjects, settle mobile plantations, and fertilize Thai soil. The first dairy farm to take shape is what we know today as the Thai Denmark Dairy Farming Promotion Organization, or simply DPO. It's the first dairy farm, trade, and farmer training center in the country. Its own farm has 400 cows, producing a ton of milk a day. The rest is bought from local co-ops to make up a fifth of the country's daily supply. A majority goes up for sale, while a third goes to public schools around Thailand. But despite the hefty circulation, DPO has hit a roadblock. Demand is 900,000 tons a year, but the country only produces 700,000. It seems there's not enough milk, yet small-time dairy farms end up dumping hundreds of tons of milk. And spoiled milk was still distributed to kids. Each day, milk from these wombs, all 400,000 of them around the country, are feeding millions of Thai kids. Yet it seems there's still a lack of milk. But with that lack, there's still a lot of milk being poured on the streets. So why is this milk going to waste? Is it because of this management or is it because of corruption? It's because of the, the management, you know, because of uh, the, the requirement, as I mentioned to almost 30 percent of that requirement go to the school milk program. ส่วนใหญ่จะเป็นนมป่องใช่มั้ยนมป่องก็คือส่วนใหญ่จะเป็นยูเอสทีเอ่อถ้าพัชรไลน์นี่ส่วนใหญ่ก็จะใช้ถ